Let's review some ways you can use Google Groups to better organize your business. If you're a Google Workspace user, formerly known as Google G Suite, uh, if you have a paid Google account where you use your own domain, uh, you've got this Groups feature. It's pretty easy to find. Anytime you're logged into Google, you can click on these nine dots up here to find various things. You can also move these around. So if you wanna have say your drive you know up towards the top where it's easier to find you can certainly move that around you can also bookmark um, these various things to find them more easily but essentially you're going to groups.google.com and groups are basically an organizational unit they used to be predominantly used for a forum style email reply all communication so i didn't really get into them that much but there's been a somewhat recent update last couple of years where there's some deeper functionality to groups. So if you go to groups.google, either by clicking on groups here or groups.google.com, go to create a group, and I'm gonna make a test group here. You can see this is generating an email to kind of identify uh, any of your domains you've got on uh, your Google Workspace you can use. It doesn't really matter. I'm not setting this up to use for email. I'm actually setting it up for more collaborative or shared uh, information. You can add a description. And the next is going to take you to some deeper settings. So who can find the group? Everybody with uh, everybody in your um, Google, basically, uh, in your workspace and your users. Uh, you can make it available to anyone on the web. Um, there's a number of settings here. You can also control who can view conversations and who can post and you can view members. Again, we're not really looking at these features um, here. So I'm gonna just leave these as they are for now, but you can scale these to the left if you wanna tighten up the ability to see or find these, um, but we're not really worried about people finding them or using them. We're gonna add people to it manually. So you can hit next. This is where you know, you've got yourself as the group owner. You can add in group members, group managers. Depending on your settings, you can add users out of your domain. So if you're using this for something where you have other people not at your company who need access, uh, you can also do that. You just may need to go a little deep into your settings to make that happen. So you can do a welcome message that's gonna basically go out an email to them saying, hey, I'd like you to join this Google group. So you can still add people after the fact. So if you add people when you set it up, great. If not, you can come back and do it after the fact. I'm gonna hit create group. And now I've got this test group so I'm going to go here. Um, again, I didn't add any people to it for purposes of this demo, but easy enough to come here under members, add more people. Uh, even if you have sent invitations to people and they have not joined yet, they'll be here under pending. Um, and again, you can go deeper down here into membership settings or group settings. But what I wanted to show you, so I've named this test group. What I wanted to look at here are three primary use cases. One is using a shared calendar. So in Google, if you have a, a, a calendar you've set up, it's very easy to do this if you have not done it, uh, but you can add a calendar, for example, like a shared calendar for team meetings, things that you know are gonna consistently happen where you're gonna consistently invite the same people. And this basically helps you avoid having to remember to add each of your agents or staff, um, every time you have a meeting you can simply create a new calendar and in that calendar you would do that under here under add calendar in that calendar under your settings there's going to be an add people and so you can actually come here now and that test group that i just made is an option so i'm now going to share this entire calendar with whoever's in that group if you add people to the group, they're gonna be added to the calendar. If you remove them from the group, they're gonna be removed from the calendar. So it's really a high level um, grouping of people where you can add them to an entire calendar's worth of events. If you wanna have certain days that are holidays where you're not open or certain things, uh, people's birthdays, things that everybody should be able to see, this is a great way to do this at the full calendar level. You can also use it at the single invite level. So if I just wanted to do an invite and say, hey, team meeting, I can come here under add guests and add my test group. And it's gonna now send an invite to a single calendar event to everyone who is in that group. 
And lastly, in Drive, you can do the same thing. So either at the document level, I can come here and say, hey, I want to share this group with my test group. And I want people in the test group just to be able to comment or just be able to view or to be editors on this particular document. Um, and as it says here, obviously, it'll notify those people as you add them to it, as well as their permission level. Another thing I like to do that's probably a little bit better is actually use a folder as the shared item. So I would come here in the folder and I'm going to share the entire folder potentially here with this test group. And that is now going to make any document I've got in this folder accessible. Uh, and again, the same type of permission level. So if you've got some agent read only documents like a handbook or some scripts, you don't want people to be able to edit, make your agent group, add it here, and then make them only at a viewer or potentially a commenter um, permission level. And that way they will be able to view the documents. If you go in and edit the documents, they'll always have the current version, but they won't be able to edit them. So again, creating a Google group, very simple. You might want to have one for agents, maybe one for a leadership team, uh, and then using that for either a fully shared calendar, for specific calendar invites, or anywhere in Drive, whether it's at the folder or the document level, you can use those to easily share content with groups of people.